Okay, so qualitative chemical analysis. This in, in, involves finding what is there, the qualities, right? Which ions, the kinds of ions that are present in solution. Quantitative analysis is how much is there. So um, qualitative analysis was originally done by selective precipitation. It's commonly called wet chemistry because things get wet when you do this. Um, it's largely been replaced by instrumental techniques, which are much less time intensive. But the idea here is that you have a sample containing several different metal cations, and you carefully choose the reagents that you add to precipitate them out one at a time. So here in this example, we have a mixture of cations A, B, and C. We'll add a precipitating agent that will precipitate cation A, but not B and C. Then we have a solid with a liquid above, and the liquid contains the other two ions. We can decant, pour the liquid off, and now we have another test tube with just B and C ions. We'll add a, a second precipitating agent to get rid of cation B. We decant, and now we've got cation A separated from the other two. Yes? Um, how do you check if you're accurate? Like, that you've isolated just cat on A and you don't still have the other stuff? Well, if you're just doing wet chemistry, um, it involves a lot of messing around. Yeah. Um, one thing that you should do is you should test for complete precipitation. So you add the precipitating agent and you think you've precipitated all of it. And then typically what you'll do is you'll put it in a centrifuge and spin it hard so that all of the solid goes very firmly to the bottom. That makes decanting much easier than what we did in Chem 1A where you were always worrying about this fluffy precipitate pouring out, right? So you centrifuge it and all of that stuff gets stuck down there. And then you add another drop of precipitating agent. If you see any cloudiness at all, that means there's still some of that ion in there. So you should add some more, centrifuge again, and then try it again. If you add that precipitating agent and you see absolutely nothing, then you can be pretty certain that you got essentially all of the cation A out. Yeah. And this is not a, a strategy that you would use to, you know, collect these for future use. We're just trying to figure out what's in here. So here's the, a big overall scheme. This is not the same scheme that you're going to be using in the lab that we're going to do for this. There are lots of different they're called qual schemes, qualitative analysis schemes. But this is a, a good illustration. So up here, we've got all these possible different cations. Could have two or three or all of them or whatever. And so they will precipitate in different groups. And so we could add six molar hydrochloric acid. And any of the cations in this first group, silver, mercury, or lead, will form insoluble chlorides and those will precipitate out. Now, if you have all three of those, it's not going to separate them, right? But if you have one of those, it'll separate that one out. Then you centrifuge and decant, and in the remaining solution, you've got the rest of the cations. Next, you could add um, H2S and 0.2 molar HCl, and this will give you acid-insoluble sulfides. So all of these guys will form sulfides that are insoluble in acidic solution. So you separate those out because they're solids. The remaining cations are here. Now we're going to add hydroxide ion to make the pH go up. And we'll get base insoluble sulfides. And we'll also get insoluble hydroxides. So we can separate those guys out. The remaining cations, we can add uh, hydrogen phosphate and ammonia. And we'll get insoluble phosphates out. And then the alkali metal ions and ammonium ion don't precipitate with anything. So, so based off that chart, how is, is that something for us to memorize for the coming test? 
No, don't memorize this. Okay. There, there are lots of different schemes to use. Um, and this is not the one we're going to use in lab, um, partly because H2S smells really, really bad, right? Rotten eggs. Yeah. So I'll be giving, giving you, it's actually a paper from a journal outlining a different qual scheme that works really well for student labs. It doesn't generate a lot of nasty waste or anything. So just looking at these groups separately, um, most chloride compounds are soluble, but these guys are not soluble. And so we can separate those. And then um, we make the mixture acidic and treat it, well, it was acidic. We treated H2S. Um, and so the, the sulfide ion concentration is going to be dependent on the pH. At low pH, where you've got lots of hydrogen ions, you're going to have um, a low amount of sulfide, and only the most insoluble ones will precipitate. <coughs> then you can separate those. And then you add base, and you can increase the sulfide ion concentration. And so then you'll get these others that precipitate out. These are the more soluble ones, but because the sulfide ion concentration is higher, they'll precipitate. And then chromium, iron, and aluminum will precipitate as hydroxides. Now we've got alkali and alkaline earth metal ions left, and we can pre precipitate the alkaline earths using phosphate. Now we're down to sodium, lithium, and ammonium, which do not precipitate with anything. And one way to identify these is with the flame test. So if you put a solution containing sodium ions in a flame, you get a bright yellow flame. Potassium ions will give you a purple flame. 